taking risks to try and keep the Capitals competitive. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and uh, welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the SiriusXM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holney. I've covered the Capitals for the last three seasons for Locked On and various other outlets before that. I'm also the host of the weekly show called the Capitals Minute Cast, available wherever you find your podcasts you can find me on twitter it's at dancaps218 you can find the show on twitter it's at locked on caps and the best way that you can help grow the show is to subscribe to locked on capitals on youtube and comment anything down below today's episode is brought to you by game time download the game time app create an account and use code locked on nhl for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply so in this edition of locked on capitals we talk about gm brian mcclellan's comments about taking risks to make this team competitive. Listen, he could have gone out there and mortgaged the farm. He could have got rid of Leonard. He could have got of Mirishnyshenko, McMichael to get this upper echelon player on July 1st, but he didn't do that. He saw the mistakes that he has made before. He saw the mistakes that McPhee made before him about being in win-now mode and what the perils of being in win-now mode are. Uh, What it does is it totally depletes your prospects. It depletes your AHL and ECHL affiliate. And I think he learned a valuable lesson. However, the perils of that are the players that you pick up are good. Maybe Uh, it's easy to get drawn into new acquisitions. Oh, look, it's a new shiny toy. It's a name that I'm not familiar with. This has got to be better. And uh, one of the things that I've talked about, and if you're an everyday of the show, you know I talk about that I want to enter into this with a positive attitude, that these new acquisitions are going to take this team to the next level. But the players I'm going to talk about in this episode, they might have an upside and they might have a, a downside. We'll talk about that a little bit later. We will talk about what the addition of Roy means to this team. A little bit later, we will talk about the addition of Manji Apani and why he was added to this team and where does Radish fit into the Capitals' master plans. But just to get it going here, about my comments off the top of the show and Brian McClellan's comments really about why the Capitals did what they did. What they did. Uh, the question was, do you find yourself taking risks to try and keep this team competitive? Max says, I think we've been trying to take risks looking for upside in players, trying to find players that we think can create an environment where they're more successful. That's been our philosophy versus let's just tank it and go down and try win the lottery, which is a painful approach. We are taking a lot of risks. And the players that I mentioned, those are just some of the players. Let's be honest, there are risks associated with Pierre-Luc Dubois as well. Uh, There are, uh, you know, things to worry about with a Chikrin that uh, none of these are worry-free acquisitions. We're hoping that they could be upgrades, but will they be? That is the question. Let's first talk about Matt Roy and the Capitals were all in on him as they gave him a six-year deal. The Capitals recently bolstered their defensive lineup by signing Matt Roy to a lucrative six-year $34.5 million contract Roy, who produced 25 points, 5 goals, 20 assists, and 81 games with the Kings last season, will bring a solid right-handed defensive presence to the team. We know the Capitals' blue line is depleted. We know that John Carlson is the one that carries the bulk of the mail uh, on any given night, and he doesn't complain, but that's not what's in the best interest of the Capitals or John Carlson. With an average annual value of 5.75 mil, Roy is expected to significantly contribute to the Capitals' defensive capabilities for the foreseeable future. Again, 
when you sign up, sign a player to a six year deal, you are drinking the Kool-Aid on that player and the Capitals are drunk on Matt Roy talking about GM's comment. Brian McClellan emphasized Roy's value as a defenseman who consistently faces strong opposition and upholds defensive responsibility, highlighting his potential to fortify the team's blue line in the coming years. Uh, we saw Jensen peel away. I think that TVR could be expendable. Um, that I think the Capitals' blue line is in a better position now, potentially, than it was before. Uh, also with the addition of Chikrin. But is that actuality? That is the question. Matt is a steady right-handed defenseman who plays important minutes against the opposition's top players and is extremely responsible in his own end, GM Brian McClellan said. We feel his addition will help strengthen our blue line for the next several several years. I think when I came in early as a young guy, I just wanted to be a steady defenseman and try not to make too many mistakes and just play my position, Roy said. I think as my confidence grew in myself and my teammates, I was able to just keep of a little bit of a step and I wanted to, uh, to produce more offensively. So I just wanted to pick my spots. Find the holes to jump in. It's great to have some offensive success, but I've always had the defensive mindset first. Uh, oftentimes you see defensemen that like to get involved in, in the offense, and that's a good thing if that's your skill set. But if he wants to uh, concentrate on his defensive acumen, I think that is good as well. Uh, his performance overview at 29, year, 29 years old, Roy's performance for the Kings in 23-24 season was impressive as he achieved career high in assists and average ice time. He led the Kings in crucial defensive statistics such as shorthanded ice time, block shots showcasing his value as an asset in defensive play. Uh, that is quite an upside. Uh, taking a look at his career statistics throughout his career with the Kings, Roy has consistently delivered solid performance, accumulating a total of 106 points and a plus 67 uh, rating in 369 NHL games. He also has playoff experience, having contributed six points in 18 playoff games. Notably, he was selected by the Kings in the seventh round of the 2015 NHL draft and was, has made a strong impact on the team since his debut in 2019. Uh, seems all really good, doesn't it? It seems like there is no risk. But what did GM Brian McClellan say? He said, risky moves to make this team competitive. That was the question, and he said, yes, that some of the moves he made were risky. So let's talk about the risk and the downside. In the 22-23 season, Roy's defensive performance lived up to expectations, but his goal-scoring numbers dropped significantly compared to the previous season with only nine regular season goals and one in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Despite consistent underlying performance metrics such as shots on goal, scoring chances, and high danger chances, Roy's goal production decreased. This could be attributed to a regression to the mean or perhaps some bad luck. A return to a 10-goal season would have significantly boosted the team's offensive output and the defenseman's position. Analyzing the team's performance in the playoffs, it's clear that the Oilers display dominance in both power play and penalty kill. Despite this, Roy was on ice for all nine power play goals against the team. I guess those are some of the things that missed the press conference when he was welcomed to the team, which was a stark contract, contrast to the regular season performance as a key contributor to the league's second best power play unit. While it's challenging to attribute this uh, struggle solely to one player, it's evident that Roy's performance faced considerable drop off during the playoffs, especially on the penalty kill. So there are good, there is bad, and how will he be for the Capitals? That is the big question. This suggests that there have been challenges in adapting to the high level of competition faced in the playoffs. So like I talked about in this show, I am trying to showcase both sides of the coin. We heard all the good stats about the acquisitions. GM Brian McClellan and the Capitals beat writers cherry-picked the good information uh, I hate to say it, but I'm going to be the guy that's going to give you some of the bad statistics. 
uh, according to these players. And I think to make an accurate assessment to uh, understand these players, you must understand the good and the bad. Um, it's like that in everything in life. If you're dating someone, you don't say, hey, I like them because they're really good at this and overlook all their bad qualities. I think that is a recipe for failure. The same thing is true in sports. It was a risk. GM Brian McClellan acknowledged he's making risky moves to help preserve the future of this team with the understanding that they are risky. How risky will they end up being? I guess we'll find out. All right, so coming up here after the break, we will talk about Manji Apani and the addition of him to this team and what will he mean and what is the risk associated with him. I'll discuss straight ahead. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you want at the prices you want it's easy to make your car the mvp and bring home huge wins keep your ride or die live at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all the shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you the can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team Every day. All right. Welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So another big addition to this team on paper is Andrew Mangiapani from the Calgary Flames. Um, he had a good season a few years ago. Uh, hasn't been horrible since then, but has not been able to find his former glory. Can he do that with the Capitals? And what will he bring to this team. That is what we're going to talk about next. Andrew Mangiapani was traded to the Capitals from the Calgary Flames in exchange for 28-year-old forward. The Flames received a second round pick in the 2025 NHL draft from the Colorado Avalanche. Mangiapani expressed his excitement about joining the Capitals, citing the team's strong organization and his eagerness to contribute to their success. What is one of the things that we know? This team struggled in the goal scoring department. Dylan Strom led the team, knocking it out of the park. And where was Alex Ovechkin? He was nowhere to be found. Uh, he was getting assists, but he wasn't scoring goals. He went and rode around on a camel in Dubai. He found God out there, came back, a changed man. But we don't know what kind of Alex Ovechkin we're going to see in the fall or what kind of Alex Ovechkin we will see in total. Is there injuries going to be facing this team? There is so much to consider. Talking about the, his statistics during the previous season, Mangiapane scored 40 points for the Flames with 14 goals and 26 assists in 75 games. He has accumulated 215 career NHL points with 109 goals and 106 assists in 417 games. All with the Flames. Notably, Mangiapane achieved career highs in goals 35 and points 55 during the 21-22 season. He hasn't been able to find that. He's been searching He's been a little bit snake bitten. I'll talk about that a little bit later in the segment. It's worth mentioning that he will become an unrestricted free agent, as we know, and was scooped up by the Capitals um, to see what kind of player he is. And that's one of the things that GM Brian McClellan said, other than Roy getting that six-year deal, and I guess the contract that Pierre Luc Dubois has, a lot of these contracts are like, let's see what kind of player you are. You know, when you talked about Chikrin, he was non-committal. He's like, well, let's see how it works for Jacob. Let's see how it works for the Capitals. 
I'm not going to make any long-term commitments until we see if it's a fit. Mangiapane's enthusiasm, he highlighted the Capitals' recent success in making the playoffs and expressed his enthusiasm about being a part of a winning team something that has eluded the Flames for quite some time. This trade follows the Capitals' previous acquisition of Pierre-Luc Dubois from the Kings for Darcy Kemper on June 19th. As we know, uh, GM Brian McClellan got busy even before July 1st arrived. The Capitals recently acquired Mangiapane from the Flames in exchange for a draft pick. We know that. Uh, for Lars Eller, this uh, trade provides the Capitals with valuable draft capital, emphasizing the importance of upcoming drafts for the future of the franchise. The move also gives the Capitals more salary cap and roster flexibility after July 1st. Additionally, TJ Oshie's future with the team remains uncertain due to his ongoing back problems. And what is one of the things that we know about T.J. Oshie is he said he doesn't want to come back unless there are some promises, some assuredness that he is going to be able to make it through the season without having to fly his specialist from Minnesota in. So he's not laying on the floor, uh, doing all the things that he had to do, urinating in a bottle, all those types of things, as the team seeks a sustainable way for him to continue his career. Without constant absences from the lineup, GM Brian McClellan mentioned that they are still searching for a permanent solution and will evaluate the situation towards the end of the summer. He's given T.G. Oshie his time, but kind of tipped his hand in that direction. And for clarification off the top here, Mangiapane from the Calgary Flames in exchange for a draft pick received from the Avalanche for Lars Eller. Um, just for clarification there. So uh, taking a look at Mangiapane, the T.G. Oshie connection, if he goes on LTIR, those kind of numbers, those numbers of his contract and Oshie's LTIR money, kind of coincide. Andrew Mangiapane recently expressed his excitement about being traded to the Caps. He sees it as an opportunity to join a team with high ambitions and start fresh. Mangiapane is eager to contribute to the team with an aggressive playing style, emphasizing his ability to create scoring opportunities. He also discussed his past shoulder injury, expressing confidence that he is fully recovered and is ready to perform, perform at his best. That is what we're hoping for, his absolute best. Looking ahead, Mangiapane aims to demonstrate his capabilities during, tr during training camp and hopes to play a significant role in the Capitals lineup. He sees this opportunity as a pivotal moment in his career and is committed to making the most of it. Uh, that's the optimistic part. That is the feel-good fuzzies part about it. What is the theme of the show? Risky Moves to stay competitive. It's not all good. Uh, there is some bad, and I hate to be that guy, but I want to, all of the listeners and watchers to be well-informed. In the 23-24 season, Mangiapane faced high expectations from Flames fans after scoring 17 goals while playing with an injured shoulder the previous year and achieving a career high of 35 goals two years ago. However, he fell short of exceeding the 20-goal mark due to various challenges. Despite his effort to generate scoring chances, he only managed to score 14 goals in 75 games, which was a decrease from his previous performance. It's worth noting that his individual expected goals were 21, indicating that he created scoring opportunities but struggled to convert on them. Oh, that's that's the bad part. We don't need another player on this team that struggles with scoring goals. I got it. I got it. It's on it's on the blade of my stick. I got it. I I don't got it. I missed the goal. Sorry guys. Uh, I'm not saying that that is going to be the kind of player that he brings to this team, different systems in, uh, in Calgary, different coaches, that kind of thing. We're hoping that he can find a glimpse of him former of his former self. Mangiapane's role in playing tough minutes at five on five with challenging line mates might have contributed to his decreased goal scoring numbers. Like I said, on the bright side, he displayed improvement in playmaking, tallying 26 assists, the highest per game in his NHL career. However, it's important to note that he appeared to move away from his previous gritty playing style 
and became more finesse oriented. Looking ahead, it will be crucial for Mangiapane to focus on reuniting to his gritty playing style. That is something that suits the Capitals oh so well, emphasizing physicality and willingness to do the dirty work to create offensive opportunities. While his work ethic is undeniable, channeling into the grinder mentality rather than solely skill-based approach could elevate his performance in the future. That is what he has to do. Uh, the, the risky moves to make this team better. GM Brian McClellan acknowledged it. I'm coming back to the main point again and again and again so you guys understand the players that I haven't spoke about uh, so much uh, after July 1st, getting acquainted with them. So Andrew Mangiapane on paper could be really good. Uh, he could also be the guy that gets snake bitten when he has the puck on his stick. I guess it remains to be seen. All right, so coming up here after the break, we will talk about Taylor Radish and what kind of player he will be for the Capitals potentially. I'll discuss straight ahead. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team. Every day in this next segment here, we are talking at Taylor Radish, a guy that played for the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, a lot of these players are recognizable names around the NHL, whether you know a lot about them or you've just like, yeah, I've heard that name in a Capitals game as an, uh, an opposing team. I'm going into these players. I'm talking about Roy, Mangiapane, and in this segment, Radish, and talking about we heard about all the good attributes from the Capitals beat writers, from GM Brian McClellan. But what I'm doing, I hate to say it, I am bringing you the other side of the coin. What kind of player are these? You heard the good, and I'll talk about the good, but I'm also going to be talking to you about some of the causes of concern. The Capitals have made an addition to the roster by signing forward Taylor Radish to a one-year, $1 million contract. Radish 26 joins the Capitals after recording 14 points, five goals, nine assists, and 73 games with the Blackhawks during the 23-24 season. Standing at six foot three and weighing 198, Radish brings a physical presence to the ice, ringing among the top players in shorthanded ice time. That is a good thing. Takeaways, hits, and block shots for the Blackhawks. His previous season with the Chicago saw Radish establish NHL single season career highs and goals, assists, points, and games played. Prior to his time with the Blackhawks, Radish played with the Lightning where he amassed 73 points, 36 goals, 37 assists, in 200 in 25 career games. Additionally, he spent time in the AHL with the Syracuse Crunch, contributing to 110 points in 159 games. Radish's junior hockey career was also notable with 292 points uh, in 241 games with the Erie Otters and the Greyhounds in the OHL. Internationally, Radish represented Canada at 2017 and 2018 in the IIHF World Junior championships. Radish brings a valuable skill set and a winning mentality to the Capitals. That is the hope that he is going to bring uh, the, the bring the pressure and bring the physicality that is what we love. So what are the expectations for Taylor Radish with the Capitals? GM Brian McClellan secured Radish with a one-year, $1 million contract in effort to bolster the team's forward depth following the departure of Patch Reddy, Malenstein and Abe Kubel. While Radish could potentially contribute to the fourth line, McClellan sees the potential for him to take on a larger role in the future if all things go well. Describing Radish as an intriguing player, Mac expressed confidence in the team's ability to further develop Radish's capability. I think, you know, you take a look at Spencer Carberry and his crew on paper, it appears promising. At 26 years old, Radish is known for his size and scoring ability with a proficiency for positioning himself in high scoring areas and, poss and possessing strong shooting and puck handling skills. Mack highlighted Radish's skill set and size, emphasizing his potential to complement teammates with playmaking and offensive contribution. Radish's previous accompli accomplishments, including scoring 20 goals in 78 games with the Hawks two seasons ago, demonstrating uh, promise. However, he will need to demonstrate consistent performance at the highest level, especially after spending years in the AHL. 
There is a significant opportunity for Radish in Washington as he may secure a place on the formidable fourth line with Nick Dowd and Brandon Duhame. Furthermore, based on his performance, he could potentially earn more ice time and contribute in various positional roles. Uh, summing this all up, Radish situation, McClellan stressed the importance for Radish establishing his identity within the team. Okay, those were the good things. That was the one side of the coin. Risky moves to stay competitive. During 23-24, Taylor Radish, who was acquired from Tampa Bay in the Brandon Hagel trade, faced challenges that raised uncertainty about his future with the Blackhawks. Despite an impressive 20-goal performance in 22-23, Radish struggled to replicate his success, only managing to tally 14 points in 73 games. This decline is an offensive production led to questions about potential to contribute to the team in the upcoming season. As we know, he was dealt to the Capitals. Although Radish had, had a notable two-assist game against San Jose in March, he was unable to consistently replicate his previous scoring success. As a result, there is uncertainty about whether Kyle Davidson will extend Radish, as we know he didn't, as he was dealt to the Capitals. Uh, so there is good. There is bad. There is causes of concern. There is reasons to be excited and all in all, we will know. The thing that I like about GM Brian McClellan is he was very transparent. Uh, he said that this, these are risky moves. Uh, they had all started with Pierre-Luc Pierre Dubois, to be honest with you. And uh, we know I spoke critically of it. Uh, I'm trying to be optimistic about it, overlooking uh, his mistakes and knowing that people can grow and become better players. Is that going to be the case uh, for Pierre-Luc Dubois? Is that going to be the case for Mangiapani? Is that going to be the, the case for Chikrin? Household names if you are a fan of the NHL at large. Um, but there is reasons that these teams wanted to move on from them. They all have dings in their game. But to be honest with you, Jensen getting dealt out as well, he was not a perfect player. And you saw what the Capitals got in return. So it's putting it all in the calculator. The good plus the bad equals question mark. We don't know, but I hope after watching and or listening to this episode, you know about the good and the bad of these players or causes of concern or their strengths, however you want to look at it, um, that I think that these players in the moves that Brian McClellan made are good, but in his own words are risky, but that risk was worthwhile taking because this team is intact. We're not talking about Connor McMichael got away. Even Mirshnashenko, Ryan Leonard, you know, the, the all-star cast down in Hershey. It didn't happen. Uh, so to a certain extent, kudos goes to Brian McClellan. Um, would it have been worth parting with the likes of a Connor McMichael and even Mirshnashenko, uh, plus, 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 whatever the case, for a March or so, for uh, a, a Gensel, a player like that? Uh, we'll never know. Um, and some teams pushed all their chips in. How good will the Nashville Predators be next season? How good will the Lightning, the Canucks, the players that flex their muscles, uh, how good will they be next season? Sometimes, you know, the best laid plans go to waste. Again, I recite the big moves that the Vegas Golden Knights made at the trade deadline. I was in awe. I'm like, oh my God, how great is this team? Why can't we have some of this in Washington? Guess what? Their name is not going on the side of the Stanley Cup. Sometimes things on paper they, they don't they don't come to fruition. And, you know, sometimes the, the, the players that kind of fly under the radar uh, end up surprising you. And you take a look at that. Sonny Milano, historically. Brett Conley, Devontae Smith-Pelly. Um, players that, you know, were, were not really well-known names around the NHL came here uh, as reclamation projects, potentially or ostensibly, and that's what they were, and and that's where you know how the Capitals got a lot of these players. When Sonny Milano came here, he was positioned to be an AHL player. I remember that, and he was one at points one of the better players on the Capitals last season. So to put a bow on this show, there is a lot of good to look forward to. Roy, the Capitals all in six year deal. Mangiapane scored a lot of goals a couple of years ago, and Radish, you know. I, I think that there's a bigger question mark over his head than the other two that I mentioned, but um, I think the Capitals made some good decisions 
and uh, we'll see how this all plays out in the future. Listen, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, your only daily year-round podcast covering the Washington Capitals. And I want to thank all of you that listen on the audio side and watch this on YouTube. You are what makes this show successful. When you're done here, head on over to Locked On's 24-7 streaming channel available on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app and on YouTube. All right, once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holney, and I'll talk to you again next time.